What's up everybody, welcome back. Um, like I told you in the uh, previous video, we're gonna get back on Chevella. So it's a nice sunny, warm day out. So we're gonna see if we can't get this thing aired up and uh, get up underneath there, get it on some jack stands. And we're gonna pull that transmission out today and find out why it's leaking. Um, I don't know if you guys know much about this car, but uh, it's been, I've owned it probably 10 years at least. Um, and then I sold, I, I bought it probably 15 or 16 years ago, uh, bought it and then sold it to my nephew. Uh, my nephew did a bunch of work to it. Uh, my nephew and my brother, and they ended up uh, painting the door jams and doing a bunch of stuff to it. And then I ended up buying the car back. So I bought it back and then I kind of finished it. So um, you guys have seen that I LS swapped it and what have you. So like I said, we're going to go ahead and air this thing up, get it to, uh, on some jack stands and get the transmission out and uh, see what's why it's leaking. Are we on the air? <laughs> So my air ride setup in this car is uh, AccuAir. Um, I had the uh, AccuAir CVT set up, and that's where the uh, compressor valves and tank are all in one. Um, unfortunately, like a lot of other people, the uh, compressor failed. So now I'm just running the VT, it's valves and tank, and then I've got two Vier uh, 580s uh, externally mounted. But we're going to go ahead and uh, flip the key on, air this thing up, and uh, hopefully we don't have to put the charger on it. But let's hop in the car here and uh, turn this air on all right so here we are inside um yeah man i haven't even got to drive it with the console shift yet i took the column shift off when i swapped it to ls and uh switch it to console so and put buckets in it these are brand new i just had them recovered and i haven't done i haven't even driven the car so we're gonna key on and uh see if the air compressors come on oh wow looks like there's enough air in there already so uh here's my controller we're going to go ahead and put this up to level three, which is all the way up. Because, um, like I said, we're going to get some jacks and jack stands underneath. So here we go. Uh-oh. For some reason, she's not happy. Let's try manual. Oh, yeah. Manual works. We'll let the compressors run a little bit longer and uh oh yeah she's come way up so we'll let the compressors fill up we'll get it aired all the way up we'll get the hood open and uh get some jack stands underneath this thing and uh get underneath there and see what we can do Hopefully I can get them all from underneath. And uh, like I said, we're gonna let this thing air up and uh, get underneath. So uh, once I get some jack stands underneath it, I'll bring you guys underneath the car and we'll have a look. So we got a car up on jack stands, so you guys can see from the time lapse. Uh, we're going to go ahead and crawl underneath here and uh, see what we're working with. It's actually been so long since I worked on this car, I kind of don't remember. <laughs> oh, let's see. So we got our big trans cooler right there. Got our built 4L60. And it's looking like. I got some on the pan here, but I know it's not the pan leaking. 
it was definitely coming out from in here so I don't know guys we're gonna uh, not exactly sure what we're gonna do here yet I'm gonna look around a little bit more and see what we can come up with and see if we can't find out where yeah so it's wet here it's definitely coming out from in between the bell housing and the motor I wish there was a bigger inspection plate on these but unfortunately there's not converters tight everything looks good in there so like I said guys we're gonna tear this thing down a little bit further and uh, we'll go from there first thing I'm gonna do is uh, wipe some of this stuff down and then uh, we'll get the starter pulled out and start taking the uh, torque converter bolts out and then we'll move down here we'll get the uh, drive shaft taken out slide it slide it back and then we'll start getting the rear tranny mount out hopefully that'll let the motor drop down far enough to where i can uh, get to the uh, bell housing bolts shouldn't be too bad of a problem i see a couple there i can get to so uh that's what we're going to be doing pulling the tranny all right i got the starter dropped out and we just came back here sorry for the camera angles because i'm on my back i got the uh, drive shaft bolts out pulled the drive shaft out and uh we're gonna go ahead and loosen up the cross member put the jack underneath here and try to drop the trans down a little bit um this thing's got some pretty hefty motor mounts in it so i don't know how far it's gonna drop down but hopefully it should be enough to shimmy it out of here and hopefully i should be able to get it back when i had this exhaust done i made sure that they exit exit it back here a little further than they normally do that way i can get the transmission slid back um once i get my garage put up and a lift in there i won't be dealing on my back anymore which this part really sucks but hey you know what for you diy guys you know that don't have a lift this is what we got to deal with so anyways guys um we're gonna drop off here and uh get this cross member loosened up and get the transmission dropped down all right well i had to lower the exhaust down a bit to uh wedge the cross member out it's sitting down over there and uh, we're about to lower the transmission down and see how far she drops down so i can try to get to the bolts let's take a look here here we go oh yeah that's gonna work out great so uh i got the trans fluid drained already i'm gonna keep this uh drain pan back here just in case something comes out of the nose cone and it looks like she should be able to get to the bolts no problem so we're going to go ahead and undo some of those bolts, pull this trans back. Hopefully, I don't have to take the thing completely out. Hopefully, I can just pull it back, and uh, I'm hoping that the pump's loose. Uh, maybe the bolts didn't get torqued down or locked tight. I don't remember when we put this trans together. So, um, like I said, I'm going to go ahead and uh, loosen up the bell housing bolts and get the tranny slid back. I'm probably going to undo the trans cooler lines, too, and some of the wiring here. So uh, it's not it doesn't get tangled up. All right. Well, I got the uh, transmission down and out. I'm going to undo these lines because it's peeking the crap out of them. But anyhow, um, got the tranny out. Got the bell housing bolts out. Dropped it right out. No problem. Um, there's a couple little things I want to do still. Um, I got to do some clearancing for a couple things. Um, but yeah, I'm going to jump over here, move positions, get on the torque converter side, pull the torque converter off and see where the heck that fluid was coming from. So uh, hopefully the pump is just loose. All right, well, I can see that it's really wet in here. So the fluid's obviously coming from the behind the torque converter. So uh, I'm gonna wipe some of this down real quick and then uh, I'll slide this back and I'm just gonna pull the torque converter right in place. I'm not even gonna pull it out from underneath the car if I don't have to. Um, but again, if it's out and it's something that I can't figure out, then I'm gonna take it over to a transmission shop and just have them fix it up for me. So, all right guys, here we go. We're gonna pull the torque converter off and uh, see what's going on. As well, it looks like I may have found the problem. Um, it's cracked up there too. So anyways, um, it looks like the pump is cracked. I don't know if you guys can see that, but right here where my tip of my fingernail is, there's a crack that comes across this pump all the way down. Um, I don't know how that would have happened. Um, 
And again, guys, sorry I say um a lot. <laughs> um, <laughs> see, there I said it again. I don't know. It looks like there's a crack here in the pump, and one, probably once this thing pressurizes, it starts pushing fluid out of this crack. I would normally think that was like a casting line because these look like casting lines right here and there's some more up here and right here but that to me right there looks like a crack so um, I guess I'm gonna pull this thing out completely and take it down to a transmission shop and have it looked at and let them tell me if that's a crack in the pump or not but I think it is pretty sure that's a crack in the pump and then once the tranny starts building that pressure it uh, starts pushing out of there. So, well, at least we did enough work to get it out, um, which I've been, you know, procrastinating for a long time pulling this thing out. But at least now it's out and uh, we can get it dropped off tomorrow at the transmission shop. I'm going to have them pull the pump. And, you know, I know we just rebuilt this tranny. Everything in it is brand new. Um, but so we'll see what they say if they want to, you know, dig into it a little further or what have you. But um, I just want it right. It needs to be right so I can drive this car. It's been a long time. This car used to be my daily driver before I LS swapped it. And then once I LS swapped it, um, I just kind of never finished it. So here we are. It should be finished. Up. It should be good to go. Uh, minus this crack in the pump. But we'll see tomorrow when we get it dropped off at the training shop. All right, guys. So like I said, that's a wrap on the Chevelle for today. Um, we've got the transmission out. It's down here on the ground. And uh, we're going to get that over to a transmission shop and get it looked at. In the meantime, uh, I sprayed some simple green on the motor and kind of hosed the engine bay off and kind of cleaned up underneath a little bit too. I also found a spot where one of my airbags is rubbing. So I'm going to have to do some more clearancing with the grinder on that. But uh, like I said, we'll get the transmission over to the shop tomorrow. Get them to take a look at it. Tell us what's wrong with it. I think the pump's cracked. I could, you know, we could see that little crack. And uh, we'll go from there, but it is Arizona and it's starting to get hot. Summer's coming, so if I don't get this thing up and running before summer starts, it's going to sit until I can get my garage built out there. So I want to get it done now so I can enjoy the car this summer, go out on some couple cruise nights and, you know, what have you. So In the meantime, we're going to head over to San Limo and check uh, on some updates on a couple of the cars we're working on over there. We're uh, back at the shop today. I wanted to give you guys on the blue car. I know you guys saw this uh, in the last video. And it was pretty torn down, but Joe has absolutely just been running like a madman. He's got the front shock mounts done. I believe the arms are already built. They're around here somewhere. And look, he's got the roof finished. Let me zoom out here for you guys. Got the new roof done. Got the pillar in. I'm not sure if he's going to add some cross bracing, but I think he is. Rear shock mounts are finished. And uh, I'm going to help him get the transmission put in this thing today. And so he can get the engine in and the rear cage built. And this thing will be ready to go off to paint. Tabbed up for the roof. Wow. Let's go look at the TIG table and see if he's got the uh, arms done. Yep, here we are at the TIG table. And yep, he's got the arms all done. He's just uh, going to take this stuff together here. They're all tacked together. So looks like he's going to finish weld these. And uh, the arms will be done too. So here's the other arms. They're ready to go. So this car will be ready to go off to powder and paint. And then uh, this week we get back to work on Danny Teco's car. As well as the Black Radius Rough Cruiser. This thing will come together really fast. We've got all the stuff back from paint and powder. So... Uh, and all the parts to put it together. This thing will go real quick. Looks like Joe's just getting ready to start doing the brake lines. We'll get the electric power steering put in. And uh, this one will be next on the chopping block. All right, guys. So we're back at the house. Um, uh, Chevelle's back up on jack stands. The transmission is off at the transmission shop. So we are going to jump into uh, adding the AC compressor. So I bought some accessories to add an AC compressor over here a long time ago. Just never got around to putting them in, so uh, we called in to our boys over at Dirty Dingo once again, coming in clutch with the uh, DDLS sanding kit. So I've got the Dirty Dingo plate, all the kit, and I also have the sanding compressor. So uh, that way when we're cruising this thing this summer out here in this Arizona heat, we're gonna have AC. So uh, we're gonna go ahead and jump into putting that in, and we're gonna bring you guys with us. So most of their stuff does not come uh, with directions. It just comes with all their stuff, but uh, 
quick jump on their website right here, dirtydingo.com, and uh, found all the directions we need. So uh, all their instructions are on their website, and uh, we're going to go ahead and jump over here, start following the directions, and uh, first thing we're going to do is get this belt off and get this uh, tensioner right here taken off, and then uh, remove this ground, I'll relocate it, and then the bracket's going to bolt up right here on the head. So I figured since it's nice and cool out, we'll go ahead and get this done now and uh, get it knocked out and out of the way. All right, so now that we got the tensioner, the belt off and the tensioner taken off, uh, we're gonna go ahead and hold the plate up here. I believe it goes in this hole and this hole. And also what you're gonna wanna do is make sure that all your threads are clean and chased out first before you put your new hardware in. So we're gonna go ahead and grab the back plate and get it screwed down. All right, now that we got the rear bracket installed, it says to leave it loose, so I'm gonna leave it a little bit loose. We had to use the A spacers, which are right here. Um, it's because I'm using all truck accessories. If this was Corvette accessories, everything's pulled back, you would put this bracket right up against the back of the head. So now I'm gonna get the long bolt in the front bracket and another A spacer, and we're gonna set the front bracket in. So the kit comes with this little tube of uh, thread lubricant. So go ahead and make sure you lube up the threads so that way you're not, uh, not having a hard time getting the threads in. So we're going to go ahead and put this back in. And again, they say not to tighten everything up fully until you're, uh, until you're ready to go and then you can torque it all down. What I'm really hoping for is that uh, the belt's gonna clear this, but I don't think it is. I think I'm gonna have to remake this and come this way, but uh, we'll see once we get it in. All right, so the next thing we did is took the uh, two B spacers that were left and ran it in with the long bolts. Again, don't forget to use the uh, thread lubricant. Make sure you use super lube. I always use super lube, boys. Lube up your threads and uh, get this thing tightened up in there. Boys, well, we got the compressor mounted, got all the brackets torqued down to 28 foot pounds, as the instruction says. And by 28 foot pounds, I mean one or two, two ugga guggas with the old uh, ratchet there. Um, unfortunately, it looks like the uh, idler, which is going to mount right here, is not going to clear my upper radiator hose. So I am going to have to make a new one. It's not a big deal. It just needs to come out this way. Like I said, I've got some more Depp Black Dash 16 over at the shop. Uh, but in the meantime, we're going to go ahead and get the tensioner mounted. And then we can start figuring out what belt's going to go on here. All right, guys. Here's the tensioner. And it's just a GM-style tensioner. It's probably off of a truck or uh, I don't know what it is. But they make their bracket to use this. It's an OEM-style tensioner, that's for sure. Uh, we're going to go ahead and get that bolted on. Um, I really like the packaging with all the Dirty Dingo products and their instructions are second to none. Everything's packaged up and sealed off and makes it really easy to put on, really easy to use. So we're going to go ahead and get that tensioner bolted up and then uh, I may try to just pull this line out of the way a little bit like that. But I still don't think that that idler is going to reach there. But anyhow, uh, we're going to jump in and get this done. All right, well, we got it all done and believe it or not, guys, I was actually able to just Loosen up this A&N fitting and pull this line over a little bit. Um, I do not have the right belt yet. I'm going to have to go to the O'Reilly's and pick that up. But from the pictures on Dirty Dingo's website, it looks like it comes off of this tensioner or this idler and goes down and under the pump. So it looks like we're going to clear the upper radiator hose. And then um, 
once the tranny's back in and the cart, the motor's jacked up, this may move even a little bit further. So it'll give us a little bit more room and I won't have to make another upper hose, which is cool. So uh, we got our new sand and compressor in. I've actually had this stuff um, for the car for quite a while. I just haven't had the time to get out here and get it put together. Um, I also picked up from Dirty Dingo the uh, hose ends. So they make the uh, screw on style hose ends for the AC lines. I'm debating whether or not to just make new AC lines for this existing AC system, which is not all that efficient, to be honest with you guys. I mean, it gets you cool, but not crazy cold, or to rip this all out and switch to vintage air. Um, the vintage air puts the suitcase inside the car, and the condenser for the AC is right inside here, right? I mean, literally, if you guys look, the headers are right here. So you're fighting engine heat and engine bay heat all the time trying to get your ice cold air and like i said the vintage air and there's a couple other companies that make a system it puts this whole suitcase inside the car so we may switch to that uh in the future i don't know for now i'm probably going to make the lines and just get this system charged up and uh let it be cold for us for the summer. So, so guys, that's going to wrap it up for this video. I appreciate you guys watching so much. Make sure you give us a like and a subscribe. Uh, make sure you uh, hit the notification bell down there. Make sure you get notified when all our new videos come up. Make sure you tell your friends, and we'll see you in the next video.